Hello everybody, Average Gamer here. Welcome to another episode of Superpower 2, the Canadian Campaign. So in this episode, we're going to design, or at least look at, the um, the unit designer. Um, in the background though, we are going to have our economy going. Our military is obviously not the most powerful thing in the world, but we're going to look at our economy here and just make sure that we're still making some money. Basically, we want to keep our telecom and our tourism up. Um, we're good there. I'm actually going to lower income taxes a little bit to 34%. And I want to keep this just off to the... Whoa. Uh, let's lower health care. There we go. And we're going to kind of keep things as is for the moment. Okay, so we're going to... We're making 80,000 from income tax, 26,000 from trade, and 1.4 trillion or billion from uh, from tourism. So we're gonna look. So it's 80, 26, and one. In the meantime, close that. We're gonna go to the design screen. So the design screen, which, well, basically is that you can just design all your weapons. Now, I want to make sure that this. Yeah, this kind of looks really tiny. Ooh, there's a typhoon down there somewhere. Yeah. So one thing I do like is the fact that you can move this around as you have stuff. So we got all our little characteristics and stuff. So a lot of units we have have, uh, well, some upgrading to do. So we're going to create ourselves first a new infantry fighting vehicle, actually. Uh, we're going to call it the Lav... Or actually... The coyote. So, first we're going to pick its its options. Well, obviously we want the fastest speed possible, uh, best armor, best sensors, good gun damage, great gun precision, and obviously really good range. So, it's pretty much already kind of what we want there. As for hull types, let's take a look to see what we can do with it here. I want it kind of like how the labs are for the Canadian forces so we kind of want something like this I'd prefer a better hull though that's very lavish <laughs> lavish um, yeah let's say this one seems to be the closest Actually, this one's not too bad. It's even got the little curved front to it. Right there. So this is going to be our coyote. Uh, we're going to paint it... Um, go green. It's Canada. We're going to go green. Confirm that. The grizzly, the lav 25. And the coyote! Nice. So the next thing we're going to design is um, some air defense uh, systems here. So this is obviously going to be the ADAS. Get boom, done. I don't think actually. Hold on, let's cancel that. I want to make sure we don't have anything called ADAS yet. Yeah, we do. Wow, that looks really realistic actually. So we're going to call this thing. Add us to. And basically, we're going to give it the same thing. Max out all its stats. Shows you how much it's going to cost per unit. Uh, we're going to name it. Some anti. There we go. Air defense. One of the best things, actually, is you can click the add us, see its characteristics, and you can see where it needs work. So, for example, we're missing something with really good gun range. Miss basically anything with guns. We're missing stuff with guns. We got good missiles, but no guns. So, what we can do is we can do one. We can do one of two things. One, we can build one that's specifically associated with guns, or we can just build a big one, like one really, really good one. Um, I'm actually going to go with just a really, really good one. So we're going to go air defense again. Add that two. Basically, I just want to max out all the stats. It's just cheaper. It's just cheaper that way. 
instead of having two units do one job, just have one job, one thing that does everything really well. And then turret types. So this is what the ad ass one looks like, but we want to change it. That's not what we want. That looks like the shulk of too much. No. Uh, maybe. No, it looks really retarded. That looks very modern-y. Ooh. With the radar dome in there. The missiles there, but it's got no guns. Missiles. That looks like it's basically just a big radar dish. Missiles. A thing with a dude sitting on it. <laughs> I'm thinking... Yeah, it doesn't work. This. I wish you could zoom out a little further, but you can't. You can zoom in real close. Can't really zoom out that far. We're making we're making some banks, so we're gonna up our health care again now. Back to kind of where it was before a little bit. But doop. And it looks pretty good actually. This is the ad ass too. Looks like I screwed up on missile range and actually while we were uh, designing this one, missile range and gun range went up. Nice. I like how that happens as things go. Uh, mobile launchers, if I'm saying this is for indirect fire, we have no indirect fire uh, units, so we're going to go missile launcher. Here we go. I'm going to call this one... Um, there is a weather pattern called a Chinook out west in BC and Alberta basically it's the way the wind blows across the, uh, the Canadian prairies and the, the, the plains way out here over the mountains we're gonna call it the Chinook because this thing's gonna just be a, just a big wave of missiles This is not to be mixed up with I tell you what Shimok. Whoops. This is not to be mixed up with the American helicopter. Uh, we want max range, precision, damage, payload, speed, armor, and sensors. As for the chassis, I like that. I like that that, that gives it a very modern truck feel. I guess it's a very Australian, South America, uh, South African, um, uh, European feel to it. I guess it's an Eastern European feel. Uh, no, that's American for sure. I think I'm going to go with this. We go with the launcher. So these two here, this one here won't work, won't fit on it, so it's grayed out. Uh, that's not so bad. That looks too old. But that looks kind of scary. That doesn't fit. And it looks like that's pretty much the one to go with. Because it like fits in perfectly. And missiles precision just went up. Nice. So there we go. The Chinook missile launcher. Now tank. Let's take a look at the tank we currently have. Oops. Okay, so in the game apparently we don't have tanks. Um, actually, in the early two thousands, I was actually already at. I was in the army actually at this exact time. Hey, hey, this is pretty cool. Um, but 
uh, we had the C2 and the C1 Leopard tanks. Uh, basically, they were Leopard 1 tanks that were modified by the Canadian Forces. So we're going to have just that. We're going to have a new design. We're going to call it the C1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and keep the same generic hull for the C1 and the C2 tanks. Um, the first tank is going to be going to the first four. The second tank will be the second four. And then the best tank we're going to have is the last one. So first we're going to pick a good hull type. That kind of looks like the Leopard 1. Uh, that, no. That's too modern. Let's go with that one. Then we're going to go with the Cannon type. That's, that's close. It's almost like this, but it's more curved on the sides. This one's the more modern one. Yep, yeah, we'll just go with this. Kind of looks like an M60. I'm going to go with the cannon type. I like that right there. That looks older. Uh, let's do that instead. Paint you up green. We're going to give it max armor, max sensors, max speed, max damage, precision, and gun range. The C1 tank. Boom. Next one up is artillery gun. We have no country design artillery gun. This is one of the reasons also why I wanted to pick Canada, because we don't buy all our shit from everywhere. We don't actually, like, really, you know, get stuff from other countries. Um, whoa. I like this. And because I picked a already designed... Wow, okay. I like you. So we're just going to go with you. And we're going to call this... Uh, Canada has the M109 Paladins. This is a little bit bigger and badass in comparison to a... This is like a, a Russian artillery gun. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. Uh, we're going to call it the... BA-01. Badass. Number one. Artillery gun. Now for attack helicopters, we... Well, actually, yeah, we're behind in uh, everything, really. So for attack choppers... So that was the dolphin right there. A little bird, cobra. Obviously... That kind of looks like the Belgian Ranger right there, but it's a Kiowa. Comanche. The Hind. Uh, the, oh my god, the Apache. Lynx. Uh, Russian thing that starts with a K. Huey. Holcomb. Gazelle. The thing that starts with an L. Oh, that's the, the that's the French one that starts with a G as well, and the dolphin. Since this is going to be our 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 first designed um, attack helicopter, I'm going to go with the hind model. Okay, so we're just going to max out everything. And we're just going to call this the H01. Simple as that. Paint her green. Boom. Um, not too worried about transport helicopters. Anti-submarine warfare. So anti-submarine helicopter. This will be with our fleets. I actually like... Do they have a Sea King model in here? 
Oh, there we go. There's a cormorant right there. I want to make sure I spell that right. Get another good game made by a Canadian company that everyone likes to play. I always love how Canadian companies come up with uh, Super Power 2 and Supreme Ruler Ultimate. Two of my most favorite games. Submarine Warfare, perfect. A fighter aircraft. So right now we have the CF-18 Hornet. Um, it can be upgraded quite a bit, so we're just going to come up with the CF-18 Hornet 2 for now. Nothing too crazy. Attack aircraft. Uh, we'll use the F-14, or the F, well actually. I like that, I don't know that's like a Gripen. Wait a second. Oh, this is fighter aircraft. We have we we don't have an attack aircraft. We go with fighter aircraft first. Here's the F fifteen. We're gonna call this the F fifteen C for the The F-15C Canuck. And actually, technically, that's wrong. This should be... CF-15. Actually, yeah, we can go that. CF-15. Super Eagle! Major Green. Boom. So we have the Super Eagle, the Hornet, and the Tiger. For Tiger Craft, we have Nada. So we're going to design ourselves. I'm going to check to see how long we're going for. We've been going for 20 minutes. I'm actually going to pick that. AV. O one arrow. Name for the Avro arrow, if uh, any of you know Canadian history. It was going to be the very, pretty much one of the best intercept aircraft designed in the 60s. It was going to be faster. It could be, fa it was like it was almost twice as fast as anything the Americans could design at the time. Because the Americans had the, the Sabre. And we were going to build the Avril Arrow, which is going to be faster, quicker, not as maneuverable. It basically, it was just designed to intercept the Russian bombers coming over the uh, the Arctic. But with the speed, they were going to build the uh, air bases along here. And they would actually be able to intercept the Russian aircraft right over here. It was actually kind of crazy. But then the Americans threatened to build missile locations along here. And along the, the border, saying that basically their missiles, which did, have the range to shoot down the, the bombers. And they would actually wait, basically threaten to say, the bombers as they come over, if they come over, will actually knock them down over Canadian cities on purpose. It's like, oh, great, 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 great. So our government at the time heeded to the Americans and instead uh, cowtown to them and, and did what they wanted. Uh, speaking of wanted, let's up a few things here. Let's let's up our research. Boom, making a good amount of money. We're slowly paying down our debt. Uh, the amount of money we're making from personal income has come up, and the amount we're making from tourism has gone up. So that's pretty good. But that is that episode. In the next episode, we're going to continue finishing up our uh, our designs for our units. And then we're going to start our first batch of, uh, of construction. Until then, see you guys then. Bye-bye.